Hi, welcome to New Fort Roman Villa. My name's Karina Westwood and I'm the curator with the Isle of Wight Council's Heritage Service. And today I'm going to give you a guided tour of the site. Newport Roman Villa was uh, discovered in 1926 when uh, they were digging the foundations for some garages and the building inspector found lots of pieces of roof tile. They called the curator of Carisbrook Castle Museum down to have a look and he identified these as Roman. And then over the next year they had a campaign to excavate the site and they found, found a winged corridor Roman Villa. John Milgate, who had been mayor of Newport for three times and was also a local justice of the peace, purchased the site of Newport Roma Villa. He also paid for the cover building to be built. This is a model of what we think Newport Roman Villa would have looked like. It was a farmhouse of winged corridor type, probably built around 270 AD. We'll be having a look at the bath suite first. Newport Roman Villa's supposed to have one of the best examples of a Roman bar suite in southern England. The room with the mosaic is the apoditarium or changing room. It's next door to the first bath which is called the frigidarium or cold bath. This was a plunge pool and would have been visited by bathers before they went up to the hot end of the bath suite. The bath would have been filled by slaves with buckets of water but it does have a drain hole where the water would have drained away. You can see this in the mirror. After having a quick dip in the frigidarium, the bathers would have come up to the hot end of the bath suite. This has a semicircular pool which was heated by the underfloor hypercourse and also by box flue tiles which took the hot air up the side of the walls. These are the original box flue tiles or tubulus in situ. This is a replica of a box flue tile. The combed markings on the side would help the tile be attached to the mortar of the wall. The room next door to the hot bath was the caldarium, a very hot and steamy room, a little like a sauna. The next room down was the sudatorium. The Romans didn't have soap and often they would have got slaves to rub oil all over their body and used a curved instrument called a strigil to wipe the oil away. This is a replica of a strigil or scraper which was used in the bath suite for scraping the oil off of bathers' bodies to keep them clean. Part of an original Roman strigil was found in the garden next door so we know they were used on site. The next bath was called the tepidarium, a little bit cooler as it's further away from the fire. And finally the bathers would have had a quick dip back in the frigidarium again to end their bath. The bath suite at Newport Roman Villa was probably made entirely with stone. There were domed roofs over the hot end of the bath suite. The domes stopped condensation falling on the bathers' heads as it would run down the walls instead. The domes were made out of tuffa. This is a soft calciferous limestone that's often found near springs on the south of the island. The Romans called it cat's brains because of its bubbly appearance. This room was called the Triclinian or dining room. It has a tessellated floor made out of chalk and clay. It also has a fireplace. The Romans would often paint the inside of their rooms with elaborate designs and bright colours. We have found fragments of painted wall plaster here on site and this has provided inspiration for the mural. In the triclinium there is a dip where the floor has started to subside. Archaeologists believe that Newport Roman Villa was built on the site of another settlement, probably Iron Age, and the tessellated floor of the Romans has begun to sink into either a grain storage pit or a well. Although the bath suite at the villa was probably all made of stone, the rest of the villa had a different construction. On top of the foundations were heavy, strong timbers which would have supported the roof and then in between was wattle, woven pieces of hurdle and daub, a mixture of mud, animal dung, animal hair and straw. This was all then painted a colour, a pinky red colour. These are roof tiles. Many of these were found at Newport Roman Villa. They are made out of the local stone Benbridge limestone. Some of them still have the nail holes. 
which would have attached them to the roof timbers. When excavating the villa in 1926, the archaeologists found Roman window glass. This indicates that the Roman villa did have glazed windows. In this display case we have some Roman window glass and also some painted wall plaster which were all found at Newport Roman Villa. When this part of the villa was excavated, the walls had tumbled down. They were then rebuilt to show the layout of the house. We do not know what these rooms would have been. They may have been bedrooms or living rooms. At the front of the house, there would have been a long veranda. And the room in the corner also had an underfloor hypercourse heating system. This could have been a heated bedroom or living room for winter time. A Roman rubbish pit or midden was found nearby. This provides further evidence of how people lived and what they ate. Hundreds of oyster shells were found along with pottery sherds and plenty of animal bones too. This is our activity room. There was evidence that this room was reused after the Roman period by a blacksmith as the remaining tessellated floor was black and charred. There was only one human bone excavated and that was found in the corner of this room. The skull is from a Roman lady aged 30 to 35 years. She has a rather nasty hole in the back of her skull, but this may have occurred when excavating rather than being the cause of her death. The garden contains native plant species and ones introduced by the Romans. The Romans often grew plants for cooking and medicine, as well as ornamental ones too. The garden here has been copied from a design found at Pompeii. Many Roman gardens had a statue of a god or goddess. Our statue is of Flora, the goddess of flowers. The plant at the front here is a campus or bear's britches. It was grown by the Romans for ornamental purposes, but they also used to cook it up and apply it to burns and sprains. Chives were often used in cooking, but there are reports that Emperor Nero ate them to improve his speaking voice. The plant here with the purple flowers is sage. It was a sacred plant to the Romans. Its Latin name was salve or to save. It was often applied to cuts and wounds to help them heal. Figs were grown by the Romans for many medicinal purposes. They were used as a laxative to make you sweat, to bring out your pimples, and the juice of figs was often rubbed on meat to keep it fresh. This is our display space at Newport Roman Villa. We have some incredible finds all found on the island, dating from the Iron Age to the Anglo-Saxon times. This marks the end of the villa tour. Thank you very much for watching and please do visit when you can.